Hey guys, Angus from Spotted Hog Airsoft here today with another Airsoft video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the JG T3K3 RAS AEG. In layman's terms, it's JG's G3 with the railed handguard up front. Now seeing as how this gun is affordably priced at $165 at airsplat.com, link down below in the description, it's no wonder that this was actually one of my first airsoft AEGs I've ever owned. Now that I'm reunited with it, is it going to be as awesome as I remember? Well, let's hop into the video review and find out. Alright, now hopping directly into the video review here, let's go ahead and start off as we always do by talking about this gun's construction. Now the first thing you might notice here is the length of this AEG. Obviously it is a longer gun, you do get a rather long AEG, definitely something more suited for woodland than something you want to maneuver with quickly in CQB. As far as weight distribution goes though, unfortunately with this length comes some unevenly distributed weight. The whole front half of the gun is a lot heavier due to that's where basically all your metal is. Your outer barrel as well as your iron sights, but the big piece here, your handguard, is constructed of metal, and that makes the gun a lot heavier because the whole back half of the gun, upper and lower receiver, your stock, your pistol grip, your fire selector, your trigger, your trigger guard, that's all constructed of a rather solid and durable ABS plastic. So that's a lot lighter than the front half of the gun, makes for a little bit of uneven weight distribution, and you know, can be a little bit annoying. Other metal pieces on the gun do include uh, various little extremities, such as all the screws holding the gun together, magazine release as well as the magazine itself and some other plastic pieces in case you're wondering would include the charging handle up front as well as that large orange tip so overall there is a mix of metal and plastic but there's definitely more plastic on this gun than there is metal as far as internals go this gun does of course use a metal gearbox JG does have some decent internals like I said I did own this previously and I can't necessarily comment on its longevity seeing as how mine met its demise but that classic hey I'm your friend can I borrow your gun for a second then and getting broken a uh, sad story there otherwise though the gun could possibly make a nice DMR internally you kind of get the idea of that with the length instantly when you look at it and overall the internal should be pretty good in this gun probably what you'd expect based off of a clone AEG Otherwise, though, the externals are relatively solid, just a lot of plastic, and the internals, they're upgradable and decent out of the box. Externally, this gun does lack any serious trademarks, but if you take a look on the left side of the gun's magazine well, you will see a nicely painted on serial number. Now chugging straight ahead into some features here, in my opinion, on an electric gun, there's no more important feature than your weapon's battery space. And since this G3 does have a full stock, it's pretty obvious where the battery's going to be held, and it's extremely easy to change, remove, whatever you need to do when it comes to the battery. And I like that quite a bit. Now in order to access your battery compartment, you do want to remove the stock's butt pad, which as you can see is a little bit of texture on there for aided gripping on your shoulder, a little bit more comfortable. Now in order to remove the butt pad, simply push it downward like so, it'll snap with a little pop, and you can remove it to reveal your small type connector, all your different wires inside. Now originally this battery space, as you might be able to catch a glimpse of there, will have some white kind of styrofoam pieces in there, and what those are made for is so that they can hold your smaller included battery in place and it won't rattle around. Personally, I would remove them so you can store a bigger battery here and make use of that larger full stock. Overall, you do get a good amount of battery space here, and also it's very easy to access the battery compartment, a big plus to me. As far as your weapon's fire selector switch goes, it's not ambidextrous and is located only on the left side of the gun. It's a pretty basic larger selector with the standard three settings, S up top for safe, E in the middle for semi-auto, and F at the bottom for full auto. It's nice that they do have the markings on there so you know which settings you're on. And also this thing clicks into place on each setting so you know you're not stuck between them. You know you're on that specific fire mode. Overall, nice, simple selector switch. Now when it comes to removing the gun's magazine, it is released by pressing in on the mag release, which is sort of a paddle style located just behind the mag itself. When you push that inward, the magazine, you'll have to tilt it forward and at that point remove it. Now as far as your included magazine goes, it is a metal 500 round high capacity G3 style airsoft magazine. Now as you might notice this thing's a little bit thicker than your standard M4 mag. Uh, they recommend M14 style mag pouches for these uh, but honestly they can fit in an M4 style mag pouch just fine. Uh, the difference being that say it's a double stack M4 mag pouch you can probably only fit one of these G3 mags. Anyway it works just like a standard high cap. You'd fill it up 
via the trap door at the top, BBs would feed through the top, and then obviously you would wind it via the gear down here at the bottom. You do also, however, have the slot in the side there for a butterfly key so that you wouldn't have to reach down to the gear. You'd be able to wind it a little bit easier, say, in colder weather with bigger gloves or something like that. Overall, the magazine does feed like any other high cap. Feeds decently well. You do have to wind it quite a bit, though, especially when you're firing on full auto. Now, when reinserting the magazine, this is key that you point the actual end with the BB sticking out of it towards the rear of the gun. It's got to go in a little funkily, the front first, and it'll click and lock into place like so. When in the magazine, well, there's a little bit of wobble, but really not much at all. Now, as far as this AEG's iron sights go, they're actually pretty nice ones and typical of what you'd find in your G3. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at them now. Now when it comes to your rear sight, this one is adjustable, it's a swivel style drum sight. How you'd adjust it is you simply go ahead and turn it like so in order to say increase the size of the hole you're looking through to line up with the front sight on your weapon. Overall it's a very simple little adjustment, fun to turn around etc in order to line up with that front sight which in turn is an unadjustable closed in sight post. So overall, these iron sights are pretty accurate to the gun itself. Out of the box, they are kind of what you're stuck with, seeing as how that railed handguard doesn't overflow to the top of the AEG. You can simply purchase a claw mount style scope mount for this gun, and that way you'd be able to post an optic on there. However, currently out of the box, you are stuck with the iron sights. At least they're pretty accurate though. All right, so the iron sights, the magazine, the fire selector switch, all that stuff, it's pretty simple. We know about that, but it feels like there's one huge feature we're overlooking, and that would be what makes this particular G3 special. It's that large rail handguard up front here. Now this is great. I'm a huge fan of customization in your AEGs. I like anything that you can customize, kind of make your own, and you can do that with this G3's railed handguard up front. I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't wrap all the way around so that you do get say something you can put an optic on or anything like that but it's cool you do get the two large side rails say a flashlight a laser something like that on those and you do have that big bottom rail down there for a foregrip possibly a grenade launcher if you really wanted to equip it with that so overall I'm very pleased with the rail handguard on here customization options are great also it's metal solid and durable so you don't really have to worry about anything like that it's a great addition because you now you can make this G3 which is otherwise a rather plain gun your own customize it any way you want now the weapon's charging handle is functional. When you pull it back like so, you can actually lock it upward by tilting it towards the sky. And at that point, will reveal your weapon's hop up. Now overall, as you can see, this is a rather large unit. It's incredibly easy to adjust, even if you're, say, playing in winter conditions, have rather large gloves. Easy to fit your finger in there and turn that hop up gear. Overall, this hop up unit is pretty effective. I especially like the fact that, I know I've already said it, it's rather large and easy to adjust. How effective is that hop up though? Well, it's not gonna be very effective at all if you leave the charging handle locked up and your dust cover open. So the first thing I would recommend is you go ahead and release that charging handle. I'd recommend slowly releasing it. However, since we're doing a video, that slap is always fun and cool to do. However, really how effective is that hop up? Well, we're gonna put it to the test right now and we test out this gun's performance. Not only are we gonna be shooting at a target placed down range, we're also gonna be chronoing this AEG to find out how hard and how fast it's shooting. So with that being said, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and test this gun out. All right, so for the chrono portion of the video, we loaded up with 0.2 gram BBs and also used the included stock battery in 8.4 volt, 1100 milliamp small type. Now for the chrono, we saw pretty consistent results, right around that 398 to 400 feet per second area, very consistent for this JG, right in that region. So overall, the FPS was great, obviously with the gun's look, as you could tell earlier, much more designed for outdoor woodland play, and exactly what we get there, a high FPS, typical of a clone, but great for those outdoor games. As far as rate of fire goes, a little disappointing in the stock ba battery, so you probably do want to upgrade that. We saw about 600 rounds per minute, and as you can see, about 10 rounds per second. So a respectable rate of fire, but you might want to upgrade that back. For the shooting test portion of the video, we changed over to 0.25 gram BBs, kept the original battery we used for the chrono, and adjusted our hop up. First off, we took shots from about 125 feet away on semi-auto, and overall the accuracy was pretty good. A couple BBs did miss, go through the crack of the chair, or go a little bit to the right, but otherwise most of the BBs came into contact with the target or the chair itself. So I was pretty pleased on semi-auto, saw some good accuracy there, especially with the longer barrel in the gun. 
Now, as far as full auto goes, a little bit more sporadic. Uh, granted, it was a little annoying that I had to keep winding the magazine, a little bit of a con with the high caps uh, that I couldn't necessarily keep my aim the entire time having to take off the wind. Uh, but overall, the accuracy was all right. It's seen the BBs for the most part. They stayed in a straight line, didn't split off. So the BBs that came into contact with the target, a little bit more sporadic, but at least they stayed straight. Overall, it's pretty accurate. All right, and with those final shots being fired there, we can go ahead and hop into the final conclusion of this video review. Overall, the JG3 G3 RAS AEG was pretty much what I expected. Overall, it was a rather nice gun, but it does have those beginner qualities to it that would make it great for, say, a just starting off airsoft player like I was all those years ago or someone in the intermediate level. It's not necessarily the greatest thing in the world, but it certainly isn't the worst gun out there either. Now as far as issues I have with the gun go, obviously when it comes to performance there's quite a few critics of the weapon's rate of fire. You should keep in mind that's with a stock testing battery. Typically when they send you that battery with your gun it's just to test it out, make sure it works. I'd certainly recommend you pick up a nicer quality battery. You do have the battery space in this gun to do so and then you'd rev up that rate of fire a little bit, get a better performance out of this AEG. Now as far as the other things I didn't necessarily like about the gun, I'm not huge with the external construction on it. It's very weighty in the front and incredibly light in the back. Uh, it's just necessarily not a hugely comfortable gun for me, uh, especially with the fact as soon as you load up this railed handguard with a bunch of different accessories, uh, it's certainly going to get even weightier in the front and even lighter in the back it might feel. Also, the back half of the gun compared to the front, it feels very cheap. You know, you get all this metal up front, and then you have that lighter quality ABS plastic in the back that feels very, very cheap to me. So necessarily, it's not the most durable or strong back of the weapon. Not like it's going to crack into a thousand pieces, say you accidentally bump it against a tree. But hey, it just doesn't feel exactly the most solid out there. Otherwise, though, there's really not too much I can pl complain about with the gun. I like the larger and easy to access battery compartment. The magazines, yeah, they're a bit wider, but they do fit in M4 mag pouches, and hey, you get 500 rounds in the high caps. Mid caps are pretty easy to find for this gun as well. Fire selector switch, simple, easy to use, and my biggest and favorite feature kind of causes the un uneven distribution and weight would be that railed handguard up front because you can customize your gun. Also, something else I do love, slapping down that charging handle. Not like I would recommend it, but hey, it is fun on this G3. So overall, this is a good quality gun, but it's not necessarily the expert range AEG. Exactly what Air Splat has it categorized as something you might want to pick up for when you start out, like I did, or something as an intermediate player. Maybe you want to try this out, upgrade it a little bit, turn it into a DMR or something like that. Overall, nice quality, unique gun, but not necessarily the highest of the highest out there. So thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.